Number 19, repeat exercise 5.18 with a contested pulling the block of ice with a rope over his shoulder at the same angle above the horizontal as shown in figure uh, 5.21b. All right, so we have a contestant, right? He, uh, the mass of the block is 45 kilograms. It says calculate the minimum force F that he must exert to get the block moving. All right, so let's first uh, remember this is the object in question. This is what we're trying to calculate the forces of and trying to find the acceleration on. So therefore, we're gonna be looking for um, all of the forces that are detailed on this block, all right? So first and foremost, let's plug in you know, this force vector here. I'm gonna put the uh, tail of it at the origin. All right, so that'll be the 25 degree vector here. So this is 25, right? This is the force applied, all right? Remember this has both an X and a Y component because it has well, X and Y components to it. <laughs> All right. Uh, don't forget also, what are some other forces in the problem? Remember the block has a mass, therefore there's a weight pulling down on the object. So I'll call that W. Remember also the normal force is also present. All right, that's a perpendicular force that, that uh, points upward from the surface that is supporting the object uh, that we are discussing. So let's call that the normal force. All right, so F's, oops, sorry. Call that uh, F sub N. And then, lo and behold, there's one last force. What do you think it is? It's the frictional force, right? That's going to oppose the motion. So you might say, well, wait a minute, this thing isn't moving. So what motion is there? Well, if it were to move, it would begin to move to the right-hand side. And although it's not moving, remember, there is a force of static friction that prevents objects from moving, right? So that would oppose the applied force. Specifically, it'll oppose the X component of the applied force. And even more specifically, it will oppose the motion, whatever the plane is in which this block is moving, it opposes that motion, all right? So the uh, force of static friction must be parallel to the plane of motion. All right, in any case now, we got our uh, table set up here. The only one thing I wanna do before we uh, start plugging values into the component table will be to just detail the X and Y components of the uh, applied force here. All right, so I'll call this F sub A, you know, in the X direction. And then this is now F sub A Y, right? F sub A in the Y direction, all right? Remember that this is just F sub A over here. All right, uh, and it's good to do the problem before and then do this problem uh, so that, you know, you get a feel for how pulling this block of ice at a different angle will lead to different results. All right, so. Let's create our component table here. So component table, all right. So great, we have an X and a Y, right? We have X and Y, all right. So let's make this and we'll put our columns here, 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 that looks great. All right, so let's put our um, force vectors in. So let's first start with F sub A. So F sub A, what are or is the X component of F sub A? Well, it's F of A, X, but why don't we do a little trig so we can get the applied force into our equations already? Because remember, that's what we're trying to calculate. We're trying to find the applied force here. So if I have to think, how does the F sub A X relate to the hypotenuse of this triangle, which is the overall resultant vector, right, of the applied force? Remember, we know this angle and the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent side, so therefore it's cosine, all right? Um, so I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna plug it in right away. So I get F, F sub A cosine of uh, 15, excuse me, 25. I did that in the last video. I don't know why I'm confusing 15 and 25 today. Um, next would be the Y, right? So for the Y component here, all right, we're gonna use sine. So it'd be F sub A sine uh, 25. Now remember in the last problem it was pointing down, so therefore it was negative, but now it's positive. That's how the answers are gonna change, all right? Now, uh, let's take a look at next vector is the weight. So the weight I have down, you know, over here, there is no X component to it, and there's only a pure Y component to this, so I'm just gonna label it negative W, right? I could also label it negative MG if I wanted at this point. It really doesn't make a difference, um, but I'm just gonna leave it as negative W. Also, there is a normal force here. Um, so I'm gonna write F sub N. There is no X component to that force, and you might say, well, wait a minute. Yeah, doesn't F sub N just oppose the weight of the object? So I can, I can say that these two are equal, but 
opposite and sine? Uh, not exactly, right? Because you have an additional y component here. All right. So if you just look at the problem, you have two vectors in the positive y and only one in the negative y. So these are not going to exactly balance. All right. That's why it's important to draw out a picture. So now let's just say that's f sub n. I don't know what it is yet. So let's just leave it like that. And then there's a, the last force here, right, is the frictional force. All right. That is pointing in the negative uh, x direction. So my frictional uh, force, the force of static friction, that is, it would just let, let's just label it negative f sub s. And then um, in terms of y, it has no y component, so that's zero. All right. Now remember, we're trying to find you know the point at which the block just begins to move. So the resultant you know of all of these, the summation I should say of all these x and y components is zero. Right, because we're finding the force when it just begins to move. So some of the forces in the x or y direction is equal to max. If this thing is zero, this whole sum is also zero. So that's why I plugged in a zero at the bottom. All right. So that's basically just what this table is doing. All I'm doing with this table is just summing the forces in the x direction and summing the forces in the y direction. Okay. So now um, let's create our two equations from this. Right? So equation number one would be for the x. So here's the x. So I have f sub a cosine of 25 minus f sub s, the force of static friction is equal to zero. And then for the y components, I'm gonna have f sub a sine of 25 minus the weight, right? Let me make that a little bit neater, minus the weight plus, plus the normal force, okay, is equal to now, uh, what do we get? is equal to zero, sorry. Okay, so now let's take a step back. Uh, can we solve this right now? Well, we have two equations, but how many unknowns? We have one, two, and three, so no good. So what we need to now figure out is how can I get one of these out of my equation? Meaning I need two equations with only two unknowns, okay? So I see my f sub a in both, but these differ. So my next thought is, well, how, do I know a relationship between these two somehow? And if I do, then I can solve one for the other and then plug it in. And great, we do. Look at the right-hand side. Here's the formula, right? So we know that the force of static friction is less than or equal to mu sub s, right? Which is known because we have our table times the normal force. So now all I need to do, now don't get confused by the less than or equal to sign, although this is equal, right? We're trying to find the minimum force that's necessary. All right, so any force that exceeds the force of static friction will be able to get it to move. So I'm gonna just use the equals uh, value. So now all I need to do is take this value since it equals the force of static friction and literally just plug it on in, okay? So now let me rewrite this equation with this in it in the place of the force of static friction. So now what I have is the applied force times cosine times cosine of 25 minus mu sub s times the normal force will equal zero. Now this is great because now I have this equation and I have this equation with only two unknowns. Remember, you do know the weight because they did give us the mass and you do know the coefficient of static friction because we have our table. So the only things we don't know are the applied force and the normal force. So now this is easy. This is just solve system of equations. Solve one of these equations for one of the variables. What I'm gonna do, solve this equation for uh, f sub n. Okay, so I'm gonna add this term on over to the right-hand side. All right, so it becomes f sub a cosine of 25 is equal to mu sub s times the normal force. Divide out the mu sub s from both sides. So now I have a nice formula here, f sub a cosine of 25 over mu sub s that relates you know, to my normal force. Now what I can do is take this value and plug it into the other equation that I didn't manipulate, all right? Don't plug it into itself. Again, if you plug it in you know, here, you, you're gonna get no result because you, you plugged it into the same equation. So just plug it into there, all right? So now I'm gonna rewrite this equation now with this in it. So let's do that. So I'll put it in a different color for now. So I get now F sub A sine of 25 minus the weight, Right, remember the weight is just mg, so let me just start plugging in mg now because I wanna to try to get some values in here. Plus then f sub a cosine of 25 all over mu sub s, right, is equal to 
zero. Let's plug in the numbers. So F sub A, I don't know, right? T times sine of 25 minus the mass was 45.0 times 9.80 plus the applied force times the cosine of 25 all over the coefficient of static friction. What static friction are we talking about here? Well, what are the two objects? It says a, a block of ice across a frozen lake. So it's ice on ice. Go to your table. There's ice on ice. And here's the static friction value. So that's the value. So 0 0.1 is all equal to 0. Now all I'm going to do is start, you know, uh, start finding some numbers in here, okay? So let's do sine of 25. I'm going to do the first part. So sine of 25, that's equal to 0 0.423. So I got uh, the first value 0 0.423 times the applied force minus then 45 times 9.8. 45 times 9.8 is 441 minus 441. You know, plus now, take the cosine of 25 and divide that by 0.1. We get 9.06. So 9.06 times the applied force is all equal to zero. I'm going to combine these two like terms now, okay? And then, after I do that, I'm going to add this component on over to the right-hand side. Notice, this is the difference between the problem number 18 and 19. This was negative in our other problem, and now it's positive. All right? That's because he's pulling up. All right, so therefore, uh, he doesn't need to apply as much force because there's less friction, right? The, the normal force was less. All right, so 9.06 plus 4.423 is equal to 9.48. So we get 9.48 F sub A is equal to 441. Now divide out the 9.48. Divide out the 9.48. And we get the applied force is... 441 over 9.48, and we get 46.5. So this is the applied force, 46.5, 46.5 newtons. In the other problem, it was 51. How do I know that? I just did it, right? <laughs> I just did it 10 minutes ago. So it's, it, it is, he doesn't have to apply as much force because he's pulling up on the rope. And if he's pulling up, that means there's less force right between the block and the surface. And what that means is that there's less friction. And if there's less friction opposing the motion, that means he doesn't have to pull as hard. That should kind of make sense, right? All right, so that's the applied force. That's for letter A. And now they want us to know for letter B, let's go back to the question. What is the magnitude of its acceleration once it starts to move? Remember, once it starts to move, we're talking about the coefficient of kinetic friction, okay? So, what we need to think about now is we need to think about the force of kinetic friction formula. All right, so we need to know if I were to create, let's say I'll do, um, I'll do letter B right here. So B will be right here. If I create a new set of axes, okay, I know the applied force is in this direction, right? And that has a value of 25 that we just found to be 46.5. But I don't care what that is. I need to know what the X component is. Right, because since I'm trying to find the acceleration, the acceleration will be in the pure x direction. Why is that the case? Well, because look at the way the block is moving. It's moving along this horizontal, okay? So um, that means also then I need to know the force of kinetic friction that opposes that motion now because it is moving, the force of kinetic friction. All right, so to find this value here, remember, it's just cosine 25 times the hypotenuse of 46.5. So I'm just going to do that right now. Okay. And if you're, you know, go back to the component table, all I'm calculating is this value right here. Right. We already came up with a formula. So take 46.5 and multiply it by cosine of 25. And that becomes 42.1. So this value is 42.1. And that is Newton's. Okay. So that's that value. Now we need to find the force of kinetic friction. So how do we do that? Well, remember, in order to find the force of kinetic friction, my formula over here on the right-hand side tells me that I need to know the normal force. So what is the normal force? Well, we're going to just have to solve for it, okay? Not a big deal, but we got to find the normal force before we solve. So go back to this equation right here, all right? And I'm going to solve for my normal force. In order to solve for my normal force, what do I need to know? The weight of the object and the applied force and I do, right? So I'm just going to rework this formula. So on the upper left-hand side, so the normal force will simply be equal to the weight now minus, it's positive because I had to add it, minus, 
and the F sub A is negative because I had to subtract it right over to the other side. So F sub A sine of 25. So the normal force is equal to the weight, which we found before to be 441, right, mg, minus then F sub A, which is uh, 46.5 times the sine of 25. And this is 19.7, so 19.7. So now the normal force is equal to 441 times 19.7. Oh, well, not times. Whew. 4, 441 minus 19.7. Remember, in the last problem, we were adding it. We were doing an addition here, all right? 421, and that's in terms of Newton. So this is the normal force. So now, when I consider my um, force of kinetic friction formula over here, what I can do is do the force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction, which if you look on our table now is 0 0.03. So the 0 0.03 multiplied by the normal force. We just found that to be 421. So we got 421. So the force of kinetic friction will now be equal to 421, 421 times 0 0.03. So 12.6, all right, so 12.6, and that's in terms of Newtons. All right, so that's the value right over here in our table. So this is gonna be 12.6 Newtons. Okay, wonderful. Now, what can we do? Well, now we can finally do the sum of the forces uh, in the x direction is equal to mAx. Right, so I have a 442.1 Newton force here, and then I have an opposing 12.6 force equals to the mass of the object, which was 45 times the acceleration. So just divide out the 45 from both sides, and now we will get our acceleration. So we got 42.1 minus 12.6, 42.1, sorry, minus 12.6, divided by 45, and we get a value of, here we go, 0 0.656 or so, 656 meters per second squared. All right. All right, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. Please do remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you out with the next question. Take care.